This video is a journey through five songs by Queen, songs that showcase the best qualities of this legendary band. But it is also the story of a small kid, a music lover like you and me. In 1991, that kid rushed to buy a cassette of Innuendo after watching the incredible video of the single on TV. He loved the album with the passion of someone who, for the first time in his life, had discovered the treasure before his parents, before his friends, before everyone in the world. Remember that magical feeling? But then Freddie Mercury died. The overexposure, the hypocrisy of the media, the non-stop comments of the public, it's overwhelming. The kid's warm love for something special turns into disgust. But then, that kid was dragged back to the music, and what he rediscovered stood with him for the rest of his life. Hello, Top Potters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master's degree in music who was once a kid. Until five minutes before I recorded this, I was undecided. This spot could have been for another song from News of the World, My Melancholy Blues. But then, three reasons convinced me to put We Will Rock You in. One, the lyrics. It's a story of someone that spends his entire life wanting to rock the world, to kick asses, to be the man. The social commentary is understated, but it hits deeper than other, earlier and lamer attempts by other band members. Roger Taylor, I'm thinking about some of your stuff. I like that the song doesn't offer you answers, but lets you ponder what kind of life are you living when you're angry at the world? What do you achieve? And at the same time, can you really escape this attitude and let things be? Two, the arrangement. At a time when Queen were synonymous with complex, almost orchestral arrangements, they opened the album with this, barebone, mostly just bass drum, clapping, and some rap on it. Granted, if your first language is not English, there's not much going in the song. I recall listening to it, and all I could hear was... We will, we will rock you! Yeah, yeah! But, well, this little melody and beat is the little queen need to rock you, as countless audiences can attest. This stripped-down arrangement showed yet another angle of the band, and it hinted at the direction Queen would pursue in the 1980s, more direct pop. 3. The solo. 30 seconds before the end, Brian May comes in and everything goes to 11. It's a great solo, but it's even more memorable because it breaks the monotony and ends the song with signature Queen's pyrotechnics. Talking about 1980s Queen, here's a good example of what I meant. History has it that after a live performance in LA in 1980, Michael Jackson met the band. Jackson asked them when they were going to release another One Bites the Dust as a single. Queen were taken aback. They had never thought about releasing it as such. Jackson immediately urged them to do so as soon as possible. With that bass line, you're sleeping on a gold mine. The song was inspired by Good Times by Chic, and its writer, John Deacon, played almost all the instruments you can hear in the track. There's Freddie Mercury on vocals, a drum loop supplied by Roger Taylor, and some sound effects created by Brian May. All the rest, killer funky guitar included, is by Deacon. Here, too, we see Queen anticipating a future development. The use of space and of noisy sound effects remind me of the kind of magic era. I'll be honest, I don't particularly like those spaces and sound effects in this context. Hence, the low position in this list. But Michael Jackson was right. With a killer bass riff that nails you to the floor and a funky explosion of that rhythm guitar, Deacon 
spend a hell of a number. Here, my friends, is where we switch gears. But before we talk about somebody to love, please give me some love. Put a like to this video, write me a comment telling me what I can do better, and why not subscribe to this channel. With every subscription, I get closer to the time when I will be able to outsource the video editing. This will mean more free material for you, better quality and more variety. What's not to love? Somebody to Love is the song that started getting me back into Queen. Because, as you might have figured out, the kid I told you about in the introduction was me. One day I was watching TV and a commercial for an ice cream came up. This song was the soundtrack. Well, once again I went out and bought both the greatest hits. Funny, I never bought the ice cream. It was never sold locally. Go figure. Pulled out of an excellent album full of sentimental tracks about life and love, Somebody to Love is on another planet. Freddie Mercury is in top form, giving a vocal performance that makes this track feel heartfelt and moving. But it's his piano that keeps the song together, keeping you on the edge, while the rest of the band provides incredible fireworks. And boy, do Queen deliver! In the hands of another band, this gospel and arena rock mix would have been just another four-beat pop single. Queen turns it into a feast for the years that stops and goes, offering endless inventions. The music takes you by the hand and brings you places. By the end of the song, I always find myself hoping that the guy in the lyrics will find somebody to love. I know, I'm silly like that. You might wonder what can top somebody to love. Well, the march of the Black Queen does that for me. Changes in tempo and in character of the music, driving beat, interweaving melodies, Queen's trademark vocal harmonies, great guitar solo moments. Sometimes just a lick here and there, just to show you that you don't need to be all over the place to get noticed. The song has it all. This is easily the gem of a really underrated album, Queen 2. The March of the Black Queen only loses the top spot of this list because some of the connective sections in the first part of the song never convinced me 100%. They're a bit too long to just be there and a bit too short to acquire a character of their own. Anyhow, the final third of the song is so hard-hitting that when I listen to it, I want to be the Black Queen, even though I am as straight as a nail. Which probably proves that gender identity is never as black and white as some people make it. Or that conservatives are right and pop culture is out to perverse our values. That's so dumb, it's not funny even when you apply sarcasm. When you think the song is over, BAM! The final rentray of the carnival, with a high tempo section that gets faster and faster. The perfect intro for Funny How Love Is. Really gratifying. There are many, many songs that I could have put on this list and that were left out. Under Pressure, Brighton Rock, A Kind of Magic, These Are the Days of Our Lives, You're My Best Friend, Now I'm Here, Bring Back That Leroy Brown, Save Me, Yes, Bohemian Rhapsody, and many more. But I guess we'll go full circus, both with the start of the video and the first song I put on this list. Like We Will Rock You, The Show Must Go On was a last minute decision that kicked Innuendo out of the number one spot. I thought it was a better testament of what Queen had offered throughout their career. It is obviously a showstopper, possibly the greatest vocal performance by Freddie Mercury, which is really saying something. In fact, Mercury gave so much to the song that people think that he wrote the song. He didn't. This is a Brian May number based on a John Deacon and Roger Taylor chord sequence. Even if we forget for a second about the vocal performance, the song 
is incredible. The lyrics are a cluster of dense cultural references, from Nietzsche to nihilism, from Ridi Pagliaccio to positive outlook about life and future. Sweet baby Jesus, this song has a lot going, and it's got it flowing so that it appears as a coherent whole. The music is also intriguing. There's a tonality shift happening early on with the second verse, while your average pop offering gives you that towards the end of a piece. There's a bridge section that is markedly different from the bleak tone of the rest of the music, complementing it perfectly. I'm talking about the part where the lyrics go, my soul is painted like the wings of butterflies. Obviously, the sad circumstances that saw the recording of the track, with Mercury barely able to sit due to his body breaking up from AIDS, color the music and the way we perceive it. It's undeniable that there's something more than just a great track by a professional band here, and as sometimes it happens in great art, the result is something that makes the listeners vindicated. Indeed, in face of death and loss, there is the strength needed for the show to go on. And so, to close the video, let's go back to that little kid that got bored with Queen. I got it, after many years. Queen are not a great band because their lead singer died, or because they could make the news, or command the attention of fans and casual listeners, or because they are great musicians. They are a great band because they never stop trying. They always try their best. Sometimes this best was not so great. Often it was. Sometimes they even managed to transcend themselves and give us something that can really stand the test of time as a bona fide work of art. This, my dear top patters, was Simon Mas. Perhaps I got a bit too soppy at the end, I don't know. You tell me with a comment adding which Queen songs you love the most. See you soon for more music related content. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye!